impact transfers quarterbacks. So, of course, Graham Mertz, transfer from Wisconsin, comes into Florida. So, Lindy's National Magazine here lists 15 quarterbacks, Will, as impact transfer quarterbacks. I'm just going to go through the list of all 15. Number one, Sam Hartman from Wake Forest to Notre Dame. Number two, one that should be of note, Devin Leary, NC State to Kentucky. Have him as the second impact transfer at the quarterback position. Number three, Brendan Armstrong from Virginia to NC State. Number four, DJ Uwe from Clemson to Oregon State. Uh, Shadur Sanders, Jackson State to Colorado. Number six, Tanner Mordecai, SMU to Wisconsin. Seven, Cade McNamara, Michigan to Iowa. That's an interesting one there. Uh, eight, Hudson Card, Texas to Purdue. Number nine, Spencer Sanders, Oklahoma State to Ole Miss. Number 10, notice I said 15. We still have not gotten to Graham Merch yet. Number 10, Kadon Slovis, Pitt to BYU. Number 11, Taylor Buckner, Notre Dame to Alabama. Will prepare your mind to be exploded here. Number 12, JT Daniels, West Virginia to Rice. <laughs> High impact there, buddy. <laughs> number 12, by the way. Number 13, Bill Yerkovic, Boston College to Pitt. Number 14, remember I said there were 15 of these. Number 14, Sam Jackson. TCU to Cal, and the very I don't last, know who that is. <laughs> exactly. And the very last impact transfer for the quarterback spot, Graham Mertz, Wisconsin to Florida. They have Graham Mertz behind JT Daniels from West Virginia to freaking food rice. And I, I, I can't wrap my head around that one. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not the biggest Graham Mertz fan. I've kind of talked myself into a little bit Wisconsin holding him back. But what, still, what does that mean for Florida? That doesn't mean I'm completely sold on him. But to have Graham Mertz behind JT Daniels going from West Virginia to food, I, 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 will, I, I just can't. I cannot wrap my head around that. So I got a few comments here. The JT Daniels one is ridiculous. And I really kind of wish you had, had prepared me because then I could have had statistics to back up <laughs> the fact that JT Daniels has sucked everywhere he's gone and exactly. now he's an impact transfer. Um, but to so Rice, how is that more There are impactful? two things I think that I want to make from an observation. So there are two things that I want to make in terms of in terms of comments here. One is that um, if you have to go in the transfer portal for a quarterback, apparently you're screwed. Like, like, like I'm not sitting here looking at any of these guys going, oh, yeah. The other thing is, Yui you know Agawai has a career you know, quarterback rating of 125. The staff felt What's the same that? way, I think. The staff felt the same way, I think, with this transfer portal class. Yeah, well, I mean, Yui Agawale has a QB rating of 125.1 in his career. Graham Mertz, 127.7. 59.8% completions for Yui Agale, 59.5 for Graham Mertz. Now, if Graham Mertz plays like Yui Agale, we're still probably screwed because Yui Agale hadn't been that great. But the idea that you're sitting there, like, that's really what we're mincing, you know, we're, we're, we're making judgments on the difference between those guys who essentially have the exact same statistical profile. Like, Yui, Yui Agale is maybe a little bit more mobile, but not really. Like, you think of him as being mobile, but he runs so often that it's really not that efficient when he does. The Clemson and I think offense you're playing, is completely bogged down when he was there. And, and you know, I think you're I'm playing thinking, a little same thing bit, about the Wisconsin offense. Yeah, and I think you're playing a little bit better talent in the Big Ten than you are the ACC overall. Yeah, well, what I will say is that Yui Agale had better talent around him no, than very Graham Mertz did, yes. right? So, like, from the standpoint of, like, are you playing a team – like, when you're playing Iowa, are they more gifted than when you're playing Notre Dame or more gifted than when you're playing Florida State? Maybe, maybe not, right? I mean, those are pretty close. But I think what you can say is that the guys who are blocking up front and the guys at wide receiver and Will Shipley at running back and all those sorts of guys are far more gifted than the guys that Graham Mertz had. So now you're actually starting to get me on the Mertz train a little bit here, Davey, just you know, talking about uh, comparing, you know, talk, comparing. comparing to all those things. Now, <laughs> I mean, 
look, I think there's two things. One, the Florida fan base is pretty rabid, so putting Mertz 15th behind JT Daniels does sort of <laughs> tweak the base, the fan base a little bit. Um, probably get some uh, get some comments there for for the magazine. Um, the other thing is, I think they're talking about total total play in general. Look, Devin Leary's been pretty good at NC State. Can he continue that at Kentucky? That's gonna be a big question. Um, but you know that. Uh, Nick Newton did a really nice job in 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 our preseason magazine where he looked at all the transfers who had been associated with Florida over like the past five or six years. And it turns out none of them make an impact when they transfer in or when they transfer out. Like Dan Mullen, for all of the warts, got a lot out of the guys that he had transferred into the program. Guys like Van Jefferson and Trevon Grimes. Early Jefferson on, early was an, on. yeah, early on. But I mean, even guys like Adam Schuler, who came in mm-hmm. and were contributors on the defensive line. And one of the reasons why he wasn't able to maintain his success is he just could not continue that, right? There were, when Truesdell and, and Daquan Newkirk and Valentino there on the defensive line, like they were okay, but they weren't impact guys on the defensive line. And so things started to fall apart. And, you know, there just was not the ability to bring in guys to the transfer portal to fill all those holes. And I think that's really the story. I think people look at it and say, oh, we need to fill it through the portal. And look, if Florida brought in another quarterback through the transfer portal, I wouldn't be like heartbroken. In fact, I'd probably be pretty excited that they brought in another quarterback through the <laughs> transfer portal. But I, I think, you know, we talk about Mertz because we see his Wisconsin profile and we say, all right, well, I don't know that he's necessarily going to be all that great. But you look at Uiago LA and his Clemson profile, and I, I don't know that he's going to be that great. You look at Leary and his NC State profile, and you're like, well, it's a it's a it's a big difference to go to the SEC from from, from throwing in the ACC. And and, and, is, and is, is he supposed to be better than what they were hyping Will Levis up to be the last couple of years? All that stuff. So I would be I'll be surprised if any of those guys are really, really, really high impact. Maybe you could make a suggestion that Leary is gonna win some games for Kentucky and and they end up a little bit higher. But you're making me feel better about Graham Mertz, except for if we then list the quarterbacks in the SEC, mm-hmm. I start to feel a little bit worse about, right. <laughs> about Graham Mertz. So it really is sort of a question of it's degrees, right? Like if, if you're evaluating Napier and his program and his staff in terms of who were they able to bring in through the transfer portal based on who was available, I think we all looked at Mertz and we're like, really? That's it when, when he came in? But I think when you look at it holistically over all the guys who were available, it's actually not a, you know, it, it, he's a Hartman solid was, option yeah. considering I think Hartman was, was the only one that really, you know, that went into the portal that there was some talk of there might be an interest and he, mm-hmm. you know, being there was the inj- little bit of a you know secret injury and all that kind of stuff happening and or, or, you know his injury history as well uh, that might be the only other name uh, that I, I agree but uh, Leary you know he's got he, he's got his own injury history there too so the top two you know have some injury scares uh, when you go along uh, the top so yeah I mean and from what I could gather asking around you know Napier also was not too crazy about the quarterback class in the transfer portal you know once. You know, there was the talk of Michael Pratt transferring from Tulane, and that that was probably going to be the guy, but he never officially hopped into the portal. Once that didn't happen, I think you know it was all right. Who do we, who can we get, and who do we think is you know the, the best to get from from the available pool? I just can't believe Billy Napier didn't bring in JT Daniels. I mean, honestly, he's <laughs> such a high impact guy. Should have brought him in to be. I mean, the, he was a Heisman contender at Heisman contender at Georgia. <laughs> I mean, preseason. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't be so down on JT Daniels. If he'd have played, they might not have won the national title the last two years. I know, years. exactly. Um, <laughs> come back to Georgia, JT. Like, you're still some playing time. 